Oh, that's so good. Um, Splurgeon. Do any of you guys watch Trailer Park Tammy? Trailer Trash Tammy? Trailer Trash Tammy. If you're easily offended, don't go anywhere near her. She's crude. <laughs> but I think she's hilarious. And she always talks about splurging. You gotta splurge. I'm splurging on my Belgian Red. For any of you who watched Fiber Friends Tag with Dan, this is what we drank. This is Nectar of the Gods. You can only get it in Wisconsin. I'm lucky enough to have a friend who is a beer mule. Thanks, Diana. And I hoard them. I've had a really like kind of not great day. So I decided to treat myself. If you've had a bad day or if you've had a good day, I don't know. Treat yourself, go get a drink. Hi guys. It's been a minute, I know. Life is super busy right now. Olive, you're you're making noise. Mama's trying to record. That's 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 my excuse, man. But I was gonna fit it in. And to be honest with you, if you're looking for a not a, ugh, if you are looking for a lot of knitting content, this isn't the show. I know it was light the last time. I have just been swamped. Work is busy. Not to talk about Debbie Downer stuff, but in the funeral industry, this is a busy time of year. My brother's having a baby. We did that gender reveal thing. There was lots of planning to do there. I haven't gotten a lot of knitting done. I'm hoping that I'm on the upswing, but I'll show you what I've got. So it might be a short show. Eh. At least it won't be two hours long the next show. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. For those of you who notice the new a uh, corner of the stuff room that I'm recording in. And for those of you who have also seen my Insta story, Dan got me new lights, yo, which there's still like shadows and stuff. So I walk in and Dan's like, one of your Christmas presents came, we open it, we open it, we open it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, you're gonna open your Christmas present, right? I'm like, no, I wanna wait till Christmas because I love surprises. I love them. And I love them just as much when other people are getting surprised versus me getting surprised. I just love surprises. So I'm that person that likes to wait until Christmas. He's like, trust me. So I open them and dude, he got me fan dancy lights. Look, it's, it's the, uh, that was a little behind the scenes shot for ya which I might cut out. I don't even know what it's gonna look like. Mm, hot mess express. Y'all come because you know it's gonna be some sort of hot mess, right? I was gonna, it was gonna be a martini night. I ain't even lying, but I don't have any vodka. I have olives and no vodka. How often does that happen? All of that rambling, I suppose I can tell you who I am. I am Chevis. This is the Chevy Rail Stuff Podcast. For any of you who want to know more about me, I try to always remember this little eye up here in a corner. If there isn't a little eye up there, then check out another episode. I think I get it in most of them. I record in the stuff room. Usually you can see the whole room in the background. Like I said, the, these lights were a surprise. This is probably not going to be any sort of permanent setup. I'll probably move it around. I don't know, maybe like every, every time I'll be in a different spot. I, I don't know. I need to do some research on how these lights work because really I have no idea what I'm doing. And Dan basically just put them all together and was like, here you go. So I, and then he went out to lift and I have, I don't have any idea. So we're gonna wing it, you know, like we do here at Chevy Rail Stuff. I have zero FOs. That's right. Are y'all surprised? So I thought I would show you an oldie but goodie that I busted out today because here in Indiana, I woke up to snow. Look, are they cute? They're pugs. Here, Olive is here to say hello. You wanna say hello to everybody? This is Olive. So part of the reason that we had a bad day is because we found out that my brother's Rottweiler, D-O-G, only has 
like four months, probably less than that. And it's a big bummer. And he and Olive are the same age. He's just a little older than her. So they're like first cousins. And you know, I look at Olive and I think, you're an old lady, everybody's old. Anyway, I thought I would show you this oldie but goodie. I just threw these in on a spur of the moment, so I'm gonna have to put it on the screen and in the show notes what these are. The cool thing about them, see, pug. Do you, here, I'll take them off so you can see them better. How's that? The thumb says pug, and then on the inside, and I can't remember if this was in the, I can't remember if this was written in the pattern or not, but I knit them in 2015. I thought I lost them. We ride four wheelers in the winter and these were like my four wheeler mittens. I know that doesn't seem very smart, does it? <laughs> but they're warm and I thought I lost them, but then I found them in the pocket of my car hearts in the four wheeler tote. So yeah, next up is whips. My Franken socks are not done. However, I have a, okay. I decided to duplicate stitch them instead of Fair Isle. For those of you who missed uh, the previous episodes and the pictures of these socks, these were actually a pair of socks from, I think it's called Natural Life, that I saw they called them retro socks or something. I saw them and wanted to knit them. Basically, it was this stripe combination with the flowers. I was originally going to do them Fair Isle. I tried to do them Fair Isle. It was a pain in the butt. I've only ever done, not that Fair Isle's hard, it's that I went up a needle size, I tried to go real loose, and no matter what I do, I cannot get my foot in them. I've only ever knit one other pair of Fair Isle socks and they hang back here for decoration. Let me go get them so you can see them real quick. So these are my squirrel socks. I knit them a very, very long time ago. I was a very, not a very new knitter. I wasn't a new knitter, but I was new at sock knitting. Thus far, I had done, this was only my second pair of socks, you know, Fair Isle, go big or go home. Like, so new that you guys, this is not self-striping. I, I carried, I carried that. See, and you can totally, I mean, look at that. So dumb. I didn't know what I was doing, which is why they're decoration. Anyway, I cannot get my heel through this part. Let's see what my floats looked like, beans, how I'd never done Fair Isle before. Or color work. I suppose it's actually color work. It's not Fair Isle. I need to quit saying that. It's not terrible, is it? I mean, I've seen worse floats, but I can't get my heel in there, so I don't ever get to wear them. They're pretty hanging up, though. I mean, there's squirrels on them. What? That being said, I tried this, couldn't get my foot on it. So then I duplicate stitched them. Now, this is my first time ever, and they're, uh, these are not blocked, so they're a little puckery. But, I mean, if you're wearing them, they would not, I mean, they'd be fine. I really had to mess around with the, the chart. It took me a minute to get it to come out right on the round, but it did come out right. Like I got it to work. And let's see what the inside of duplicate stitching looks like. Not pretty, but who gives a shit? Who's looking at the inside of your socks? You, you're looking at the inside of your socks. And I can get my foot in these, right? I had a picture on Instagram of them. If you've never duplicate stitched before, it's pretty cool, especially if you have stitching history. Uh, it came pretty easy to me. I just watched the Very Pink Knits tutorial on it and it was like easy peasy after that. I did it in two evenings. You could probably do it in one evening, but I was watching a movie and I'd catch myself like stopping to watch the movie because it's not like knitting a vanilla sock. I had to actually look 
at what I was doing, but it goes really fast. So if you're ever looking at this, I highly recommend duplicate stitching. I would do it again in a heartbeat and there might be some other things that I wanna try duplicate stitching on. I also forgot to mention in typical Chevis fashion, this is the Miller Girls yarn that I purchased up at Allegan. I can not, oh, it, they, it didn't have a colorway name on the tag. It just had uh, the fiber content, which of course I don't remember because it's me, y'all. The pink is actually this pink, which I can't remember what it is. I used it in my Sunset Highway sweater, so that's just scraps. The orange and the green are blue, blue men. <laughs> uh, not blue men fiber arts, leading men fiber arts is the orange and the green. The blue is scraps of something I don't remember. And this mustardy yellow is Lady Llama, which I got this, this mini on the last episode. So they'll all be linked in the show notes. You know how I do. I might be a hot mess on film, but I do try to link everything in the notes. Then I have my Airly socks by, Ju oh, and all my, actually I'll put those here. All of my, my scraps for some reason in this bag. I don't even know why I'm showing you these. It's basically silly. I got that far on those. These are the Early Socks by Judy Bray. Judy, good grief, I can't talk. Julie, it's by Julie Bray. Hopefully the next time you see those, there will be a lot of progress on them. We are going to Arizona for Thanksgiving. Dan's brother is out there getting his PhD in philosophy and we have not been out there. He's been out there for like five years. So this will be the first time we're heading out his way. It's also his birthday. I get to meet Jake and Ray from Dog Star Knits. I'm really excited about that. I have to touch base with them actually and make sure we're still on for that. I'm hoping to have lots of plain knitting. We are flying Southwest. It's the first time I've ever flown Southwest. So I hope that they're cool. I don't know. Like I hope you get bags and stuff. I need to look into all that. I flew Spirit Airlines one time, never again in my life. Sorry. Ew. The Susu. <laughs> you guys, this sweater. Here's my issue with the Susu. Let me just show you. For all of you, for all of those of you, which is what I normally say, for those of you who have been watching for a while, you know that I've, I don't even know when I started this sweater, but it is taking me forever. It never takes me this long to finish a sweater, ever. I usually pump them out because I want to wear them. I want to wear this sweater. It is double moss stitch or double seed stitch, whatever you call it. It is a slog. It's not hard, it's just not any fun. So I'm barely anywhere on it. Then, and you know what? I don't think I have, I didn't. I didn't put my thing back in. Ugh. I can't remember where I was the last time you guys saw this. I want to say I was like there maybe. I did not, I have not knit very far, but this is why I haven't knit very far. I picked it up on the last episode. I said, I'm going to make a point to try and knit on this. I mean, look at how long, how many stitches this is. It's gorgeous. The texture is amazing. I have the back done. I'm doing the front, which is, let me show for any of you new viewers who haven't seen this. The back is done. It's not hard, it's just a drag. So I picked it up because I was going to make a point, you know, like, be, I don't know about you guys, but when I have something like this, first off, I don't wanna start another sweater until I get this one done because I know me and what will happen is this will super languish for a long time and I want it finished because I wanna wear it, right? Then I find myself like angsty knitting like I'm mad at it while I'm knitting it, and then I F up, which is exactly what I did here. I got, I feel like, I got it out one night, I knit like three rows, and then realized that I forgot to twist a cable. 
and had to rip back three rows, knit the same three rows, actually it might've been four rows, and an entire evening, because serious, double moss stitch, I'd rather hold my, my hand over a candle. I mean, I'm to that point with this, you guys. And I'm so, like, I'm over halfway. Oh, no, maybe I'm not over halfway because I still have sleeves. But I'm pretty damn close. You know what I mean? So I want it done. But at the same time, I'm mad at it and just think that it needs to hibernate because I spent an entire evening knitting on this and ended at the same point I was when I started. Another reason that I want to get it done is it's holding my ball sacks hostage. Like, I want to use these for other stuff, man. So, I don't know. I will see. I ain't promising nothing. I forgot to mention this pattern is by Nora Gone, and the yarn that I'm using is Plucky Knits in the Deep Dish colorway, which this is actually another base. I think this is their DK base and I'm knitting it on their fingering. I wanna say it's so low, does that sound right? It's been so long since I've knit on it that I don't even remember. The Seuss is why I drink. Like I need an excuse. <laughs> As you know, my brother is having a baby. I wanted to start something. I didn't know, we didn't have the gender and he is having a little boy. We just found out last weekend. I'll include like stuff on that at the end. If y'all are interested in pictures, I'll put some in. I feel like a witch, like I need a wand and I'm casting a spell. I don't know what to do with my hands. Name the movie. <laughs> Okay, I wanted to start a monster. This is not even the right bag. Good grief. I wanted to start a monster. I purchased monsters that I had not knit. So I picked one and I chose Bonk. Isn't he cute? That's Bonk by Susan Claudino. She has awesome stuffies. Because I had the, like the Miller girls from, it was just out, I decided to do it. It's pink and purple and blue, and I was going to give it to what I now know is my nephew, but I was kind of like, I mean, my brother's cool. He'll totally be cool with pink, but Dan, and I was just gonna give it to him anyway, but Dan said that he wanted another monster for his desk, and for those of you who've watched a while, you know that Dan really loves his his little collection of desk stuffy things. Like, he has all sorts of stuff. He has a voodoo doll, which is also Susan Claudino. That's the first uh, pattern of hers that I ever knit. And he has like a, a cactus and a, a little, I gave him that felt, needle felt pig that I made. He has like a whole little collection. But this is how far I am thus, thus far. This is how far I am thus far. Allow myself to introduce myself. Another movie title. Go. This is my wife, Oprah. Anybody? You're either too old or too young for that movie, I'm guessing. <laughs> I stuffed this with some old fiber that I was I didn't really like. It's perfect for stuffies. I knew I was never going to spin it. It wasn't enough to really do anything with. I was actually going to add it into some carded bats and I never did it and so it's a stuffy and then it's little foot. I don't know what you guys do, but this is my, my catch all. Do you remember this guy? This is his nest. This is where he lives. He guards my scraps and I use these scraps for stuffing and I cram them down in there when they get big and they sit on a desk over there. And then this, I'm just moving you guys all around. That's my winding station right here. And this teacup right here is where I put all of the little, uh, like the scraps that you cut off your yarn when you're winding. The ties, the ties on your skeins of yarn that you snip off. And then when this teacup gets full, this was one of my Grandma Nata's teacups and it didn't, it has stuff on it. It didn't have a saucer, so it just, it's kind of like, I am a big fan of the Island of Misfit Toys. 
I love anything scratch and dent. If you don't fit in, I wanna be your friend. If I have something that's broken, I feel like I need to find it a job to do. So this one, so this one holds my yard. Let me show you him again. So I have this one leg to do. I have his lethal face, which is this. So next I have to sew his face on him and put on his little eyes. And then I'm guessing do the leg and then his ears and his arms. So hopefully you will see those, him, bonk, the next time I record. We're just flying right through. At least I think we're flying right, right through. Watch it be an hour long episode again. That's all my whips actually. We're done with the knitting. There will be other like fiber related content, but that's all I got for right now. I will tell you, I don't know what it is with winter, but do you guys have that guilt of finishing a product? I, a product, a project? I, I want to cross stitch so bad. Do you remember those cross stitches that I got? Um, I got the, it was like a, God, now I don't even remember what it was. There was a small one, and then there was that octopus garden one. I, I have all this cross stitch that I want to do. This is the biggest cross stitch I've ever done, which is my labyrinth, and I love it. But for some reason, cross stitch for me is once I get started, I don't want to stop. I'll work on it for hours. I don't know what it is, but it's almost like an obsession. I just want to keep working on it. However, I feel guilty, much like my sweater, that if I start a cross stitch, I won't finish my, my drop cloth sampler. Hold on, let me grab it for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. This is my drop, drop, I can't talk. This is my drop cloth sampler. I haven't done anything on it since the last guy, last time you guys have seen it. I have basically that whole side right there and just a little bit over here. So I'm over, I don't know, it looks like I'm kind of over half done. And it's these things that if I just start and do it, I do it, I know I would. We've just been busy and then I feel guilty and if I have just a few minutes, I don't feel like, I, cause this to me does not come naturally. I have to really think about it and I like set myself all up and you know, I need to, I need to concentrate to do this. I don't know these stitches off the top of my head. Like I have to think and so I can't just like pop it out. And I tend to pick up my knitting. Should I call this episode the, the whiny, why don't you bitch about it episode? Can I put bitch in a title and not get flagged by YouTube? <laughs> I wanna get this done so that I can start some cross stitch. I don't know what it is about winter, but I love to cross stitch in my rocking chair with my little lamp and my hot tea. I don't know how I got off on that tangent really. We'll never know. My next thing though is up and coming. I'll put a picture here. I will tell you, I am not typically a mystery knitter. I've done one and it was the snow melt by Helen Stewart, which with Helen, you can't go wrong. Everything she has is awesome. Uh, at least that I've seen. My colors in my snow melt were amazing. The shawl was amazing. It was a pleasure to knit. Uh, if you've never knit a Helen Stewart pattern and you maybe have her in your queue or you have one of her patterns that you're on the fence about and you kind of are ho-humming or trying to decide, pick her patterns. Very well written. I'm not sure if she does it in all her patterns or just her mystery, but as you go, she gives you a percentage as to how far you are in the pattern, which I thought was really cool. While I had a very good experience with my first Mystery Cal, I have had friends that have not had great experiences and have spent a lot of money and a lot of yardage and yarn to knit something that they didn't really care for. So I tend to shy away from them 
The thing that stood out to me for the Midwinter Moon is the name, which I know is so silly, <laughs> and the picture. So that's why I even looked at it in the first place. Then it was $7, but for that day was on sale for $5. So I snagged it. I had fun picking the colors. If any of y'all are doing it, I will be stalking the hashtag. Feel free to tag me because I'd like to see yours as well. And you can kind of follow along with mine if you're not really a mystery knit along person. The other thing that sold me on it is I went and looked at Larissa Brown's other patterns and I really liked them. If you're on the fence about a mystery knit along, one thing that I have noticed, like when friends have said that they didn't like the mystery knit along, I've checked out the designer's other patterns and it's like, well, you know, that's all she knits is lace pie shawls. Why wouldn't you think it was gonna be a lace pie shawl sort of thing? Which I'm totally making that up. That's nothing specific, but they were very much along the lines of that designer's style. So you'd think that if you looked at their previous patterns that it would be similar. I won't name names, but there is a very big designer who had a mystery knit along. I had friends who participated in it, loved all their patterns. And the mystery knit along was not anything at all like any of their other patterns. Hopefully this one's not that way, but I'm very excited about it. And I'm going to show you the colors now that I blathered, blathered on for 10 minutes about it. It takes three skeins and it is fingering weight. These are my three. Aren't they cool? I sat on my floor and messed like, you know, basically laid my stash out on the floor and just went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And this just kept coming up. I don't know about you guys, but do you ever like a combination, but then continue to do more in tarot? Cause you guys know that I'm into that. It's, it's very intuitive. You're supposed to trust your intuition. The first thing that comes, you're supposed to roll with it. And I've really been working hard on doing that. Like, stop second-guessing yourself. If you have a gut feeling, it there's probably a reason. This was one of those things. I, I put this together at first. I loved it. Then I did a bunch of other stuff, and I kept looking back at this one. I'm like, why am I making this difficult? I like this. I'm doing it. This is vintage old school Moonstone Dye Works. I have no idea what the colorway name is, but... I believe that this is when Tommy was first starting out uh, kind of dabbling in if she wanted to die or not. And I won a prize. I can't even remember what her giveaway was. But this was one of the prizes. This is Leading Men Fiber Arts in their Metamorphosis colorway on their Showstopper base. Oh, I cannot wait to see how this knits up. I got this at YarnCon, probably their first year. I, I got this the same show that I got that puffin fiber that I made for my, my hat, my hand spun hat. It's probably been a couple episodes ago, maybe. And then V Yarns. This is pretty new to my stash. I just got this at the last yarn con. So she hasn't been marinating very long. And this is gem is the colorway. Showtime, Synergy. If y'all want in on this cow, it doesn't start until, I wanna say, December 7th. There's also a dyer, and forgive me, I forget right now, that is selling kits for it. So you can kind of look at their colorways as well. Actually, if you look at hashtag mid, midwinter moon mystery cow, something like that. Look at their hashtag and the dyer who's selling the kits has hashtagged at that so you'll be able to see them. So that's up and coming. I'll probably cut all that out. Why? I mean, I talked about that for way too long. Or at least I feel like I talked about it for way too long. Is it just me? I'll, I guess I'll figure it out when I'm editing, but... 
Like, do you want to listen to me say the same thing 15 different ways? Because that's what I feel like I just did. Another up and coming. I've talked about these guys before. Sweet Tea No Shade podcast. If you don't watch it, go watch it. I love them. They're one of my favorites. They are married, Scott and John, and they are a hoot. They both knit. They banter back and forth, and I absolutely love it. I very much enjoy them. They are starting a cal. I don't remember. I think maybe it started. The only thing I remember them talking about is when it ended, not when it started. So you'll have to watch their latest episode, maybe they'll say. I do know that it ends in February, so you have plenty of time. They're calling it their Finish It Cal. So it's Sweet Tea No Shade. S-T-N-S, right? S-T-N-S Finish It Cal. Then they were talking about how they said it and they were re-editing and figured out that it, their hashtag had the word shit in it, <laughs> which I love. The word shit's in it. Finish shit. <laughs> As I was saying before, I hate it when I have languishing things. I am not one of those people that have umpteen project bags. And on their latest episode, they did a thing where they w just went through their project bags and it was, they had a whole stack of project bags and they didn't know if one, if one was Scott's and one was John's. They, ju they just didn't know until they opened it and they did frog it, finish it, file it. I think was what they did. It was fun to see because it's like Christmas. I mean, they'd open those project bags and have no idea what was in them. And it's like, oh, I remember this. I am not that way. That gives me anxiety. I know that there's a bunch of you out there that have a bunch of whips. I can't do it. However, I do have one. For those of you who are veterans to the podcast, or for those of you who have been, who've just recently binged all my episodes, you are probably going to know this more than like the veterans who've watched from the beginning. These are my brainless socks. Could not tell you the last time I knit on them. Uh, I started other things and they did, oop, there went a progress keeper. It could potentially be gone forever. These are the brainless socks. I am on the cuff. You guys, I knit two at a time. I'm on the cuff. This long I haven't had my needles. At least I haven't stolen the needles from them and I'll know what needles I was using. I don't even remember what the yarn was. Hold on. Oh, I have the, this is the, whatever that is. Servinia, Servinia. So it has that cable, which it's a really easy cable. And then I'm on the cuff. Now, the cuff, if I remember correctly, I'm gonna have to look at it. Yes. The cuff was twisted rib, it calls for in the pattern. And it's a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away. And then it has this cable that runs up the side. Well, when I started it, I started following the pattern because I am a rule follower. I know, right? You're like, what, you are? <laughs> For the most part, I am a rule follower. I, I have broken a few rules in my day. I tend to follow patterns. I don't mess with them too much. This one though, and you can see it, see that ridge right there? I was like, bug it. I am not doing twisted rib. I don't even like twisted rib. I don't, it's tight, it, it, I don't, yeah. So I just switched to regular rib. I do remember that. And it just wasn't fun and I started knitting. I should go back and look at my episodes and see what it was that took all of my uh, whatever away from this. That's interesting. Are you serious? I am not, gosh. That's the cool thing about this podcast. It is sort of like a diary for me that documents things because I would never, especially since I don't do project pages, I would never remember this. For those of you who've watched our binge watching and have, you know, recently heard me talking about these, did I match those on purpose? I never match my socks. I mean, look at that. 
I never match my socks. I don't like matching socks. I don't remember doing that on purpose. That's weird to me. Well, no, I don't think I did because look how different the toes are. Isn't that weird? Anyway, this is going to be my finish it because it sits over there on my stool and I look at it all the time and I feel guilty as shit because it's not done, especially because I'm so close to being done. So I am going to take it with me on my Arizona trip. Famous last words, but I have until February to finish them. So this is gonna be part of the sweet tea, no shade, Cal, finish it Cal. I have been doing another random crafting thing outside of uh, knitting. So, Becca, if for some odd reason you're watching this, shut it off. Because I don't want the surprise to be ruined. My, if you can follow this, my brother's girlfriend's sister-in-law slash best friend is who I uh, planned the gender reveal party with. And we got pretty close. Like Becca's awesome. I like her a whole bunch. And her birthday is in November, like November 27th. I keep all my tarot cards in a box and she really liked my box. So I decided to make her one. She wants to start reading tarot so this is the box. I took the hardware off of it. I didn't like the hardware. This is one of those boxes that came like naked at Michael's and I painted it. I put this gal on it. This is the Hierophant, which I don't know. It's not showing very well, but this is the Jour de Vivre, Jour de Vivre deck. It's French and y'all know I have a hard time pronunciating English words. So I'm probably completely slaughtering French words, but this deck is gorgeous. When I saw this, I then proceeded to stalk the deck and I think that it's on my wish list because it, the artwork is so pretty. I'll link it for any of you who are interested in tarot. The reason that I picked the Hierophant for Becca is this is her birth card. She's a five. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what your numbers are, but you can find your birth card by numerology. You add up all of your, like my birthday is 224, 1980. So it'd be two plus two plus four plus one plus nine plus nine plus, no, not nine, plus one plus. You get it. Until you get one number, she's a five. Hierophant is her birth card. For any of you who are interested, hierophants are typically representative of uh, individuals in your life that you seek for wisdom. You, a lot of times they are uh, pastors, teachers, lawyers, doctors. It's people that you look up to maybe not necessarily look up to, but approach for guidance in something. And it's also very uh, esoteric and spiritual. It's spiritual wisdom is in this card. Uh, they are very structured, see like religion. They, they have no problem being very structured, but at the same time, they can go with the flow and it doesn't trip them up. So that's her card. That's why I chose this for her box. Of course, this is not done. I will show it to you done. It will have feet. It will have some other embellishments. Uh, the inside, she is a yoga instructor. And so I had to do a mandala. And then there's going to be some other stuff in here. And I will show you that as it goes along. So just something else that I've been having fun doing. I did have a couple of prize donations for whatever our next prize is. Just thought I would share them with you so you can see them crinkling. This is from my friend Robin, who uh, has the Etsy shop from the south of home. She doesn't have anything in there right now. I will link it, but she is a United Sto Stoits. She's the United Stoits. 
She's a United States Air Force veteran, and she's very supportive of uh, women that have served with PTSD. So she does have her uh, little card in here explaining that. She donated a couple of project bags. It's awesome because, you know, she knows me so well, and I'm guessing any of the viewers who also like my shenanigans, it has beer on it. What? And then martinis. Right, right there. Want the olive right there with this cool green. I don't know what the inside is. I don't want to open them because, you know, if you open these, the stuff, I don't want to mess them up. So it'll be a surprise, the inside fabric, when you get it. We'll save those for some other time. I wanted to show you guys, I put a picture in my knit mat from Paige the Framer at Frame and Fiber. I framed it and that is my sister and my brother. We went on that bike ride, I don't know if I told you guys that. But with the tattoos and stuff, I thought it was fitting to put our, our little biker picture in there. Hashtag sibling love. It makes me happy. Last episode, I talked about our Halloween party. We were going to go as Jack the Ripper and one of his victims. We got all the stuff for it. And unfortunately, due to the weather, the Halloween party got canceled. Where we were going to park was in a side field. And it rained so much that we wouldn't have been able to park there. And there really wasn't anything anybody could do. So we have our uh, costumes for next year. It's okay. Last we had, I talked a little bit about the gender reveal. I'll go ahead and pop in some pictures. It was a lot of fun. I'm super excited to knit for this baby because now I know it's a boy and I can start knitting things. So be prepared to see some of those things. I won't be annoying, I promise. I am very much, you know, still like, child free by choice and when I say that I've said it before like I don't dislike children I just don't want any myself because as you guys know I can barely keep my dog alive hashtag tripod but I can cuddle babies and knit for them and they love me it's weird like I mesmerize babies and it's weird because, you know, like I kind of don't like, I'm like, eh, babies, right? But babies stare at me like with admiration. And I think it's because of my voice. Because I have this like big, booming, deep voice. They're like, it's like I hypnotize them with, with my lungs. <laughs> I could be totally making that up. I don't know. I hope you guys have a great time until the next time I see you. It will be after the holidays here in America. Turkey Day, gobble gobble, is next Thursday. Like I said, I will be in Arizona. I hope to, you know, do Insta stories and yada yada. You'll hear about hopefully my visit with Jake and Ray. And uh, that's it, really. So until we meet again, be sure to thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that happy horse shit. Until next time, later. like I had a booger on my nose but I totally don't it's just the it's the lighting maybe I don't like these lights after all